long so we, after long we could uh, meet together to discuss uh, wow. about the sase and so many doubts were piling up for ages now so we'll try to clear as many as possible today and we shall be open to answer all your queries pertaining to sase and the referrals and whatever the doubts so regarding the uh, sase working and doubts at any time hereafter. So it is uh, my pleasure to uh, share this uh, program with Dr. Manish Bamurthia, my friend, and we have been interacting with each other for almost more than 13 years. So now what I was going through the questionnaires, and there were about 14 to 15 questions which were shot to us. And most of the time, what I felt is that questions are sometimes are self-explanatory and probably because we have got a new uh, recruitments of the medical officers, the routine things, what is need to be done. So we need to re-emphasize on that. So now we'll go with, we tried to prepare a, a question and answer to that. And what is the explanation? If at all any guideline uh, showing slide is available to us, we are projecting those slides and where the guidelines are not there, so we are trying to do the explanation. So we'll go with the questions and then uh, supporting slides or guidelines with that. Can we go for the first one? I think we need to wait, sir, but you are still joining. Not joining? Still joining. Shall we go ahead? Or... Uh, ma'am, can we wait for two, three minutes? Because I sure. see plus still Sure, joining. sure, sure, ma'am. No, no issues. Please take your time. Shall we wait or can we go ahead? I think there are three, four, four, three. Oh, this question is for ITEC India, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can wait, sir. Please take your time. We can wait. No issues. I think joining. We can go beyond one hour also. We have no issues, sir. So good afternoon, and I hope that uh, most of uh, the stakeholders have already joined, and those who have got questions and those whose queries are going to be answered have already joined. So what we try to do is we analyze the questions. So we got something like about 14 or 15 questions. There were a few duplication of the questions and doubts. Those were clubbed together, and we tried to give the explanation as far as the wherever the guidelines are available and few questions which are practical where there are no guidelines. So can we, we'll try to share our experiences with the SASIP as well. So uh, can we go for the first question? So these are the three questions. Uh, I felt it is pertinent to take it together and answer them together. 
So first question was, wire load is unsupported and client on EAC adherence is poor, less than 75% due to unexplained reasons, whether to repeat viral load, uh, viral load test or not. So this will try to first, this query is not audible. So you audible. Am I audible? Yes, sir. And second question, poorly adherent wire load unsuppressed client wire load test repeated, SASEP done, switch to second line, patient is still not adherent on the second line, wire load should be repeated or not if unsuppressed on second line, should the patient be sent to SASEP for the third line? This is another question. Third question is adherence is less than say 95%. How long can we hold the client on EAC and when to refer the client for the SASEP? So before we understand these answers, we come to the answers for this. So let us have three or four slides which are already there in the guidelines. So first I will go through those slides. So look at this scenario. So where the scenario of conduct of the viral load test at the scheduled duration and prior priority criteria so whenever it is scheduled, we have to perform the wire load. There can be two scenarios. So one scenario is one scenario is wire load is less than 1,000 copies. So what shall we do? So there is no treatment failure and there are no issues. And so hence, we'll continue on the routine uh, monitoring and testing and the patient shall continue on the same regime. The second issue comes is when we are done a scheduled wire load, as per the priority criteria or a routine one, and we see that the viral load is more than 1,000. So the most important thing is the next step, the counselor to provide step of adherence package to the patient for three months. What does that mean? So you've got three months package, three months. And whose role is the primary? The counselor role is the primary. Who is a counselor? Counselor is the designated counselor, a medical officer, a SASEP member, or anybody counselor what is that need to be emphasis on the uh, on the client so is adherence in the last three months is more than 95 percent or not so what are the things what we are going to do it will see in the next step we have to emphasize that the enhance uh, or step of adherence has to be delivered and that should be successful to the extent possible so when that will happen we'll see in the next following two three slides and after doing that in perfect manner, where all our roles are impeccable, the patient cooperates with you, there are no logistic issues. In that thing, there are two things what will happen. We'll have to do a repeat viral load after three months. And if repeat viral load, there are two scenarios which can come. One, a viral load, which was about 1,000 rupees, about 1,000 copies, has now suppressed with the adherence counseling, where we tried to maintain adherence more than 95% and we achieved that thing. It's a successful, successful step of adherence because the patient perhaps was not adherent and we made him to adhere and we emphasized the factor and the viral load being achieved less than 1000, but here the person has got tendency to uh, go down with the adherence and the counselor will take extra step in seeing to it that the patient continues to be monitored probably uh, continuously and he will shall continue on the routine monitoring. The second scenario is it's been successful, but the viral load is more than thousand copies. That means we are dealing with the actually true treatment failure. So the case need to be referred to SASE for further evaluation and whether we go for the second line or from second to third line will only be decided with the SASE or ART plus centers not at the periphery, because this is also one question which is there. Now the question comes is, how much of time if it is continues to be uh, uh, non-adherent for more than, should that situation happen to us? Now if you look for the next slide, the clinical scenarios for the wire load is something like this. There are three scenarios, wire load more than or equal to 1000 copies per ml. The second scenario is wire load is less than 1,000 copies for ML and undetectable TAD. Last two, 
or the down two situations or we are not going to deal in this where the viral is supposed that the rt working you should continue the virus is undetectable means it doesn't mean hiv is disappeared no it means that the per current regimen is continuing and the adherence has to be as good as it was before and now the first scenario we are going to deal with, there are two possible uh, situations where the viral load is more than 1000 or equal to 1000 copies that current virus is not suppressed current art working but patient is not taking it properly again we need to underline patient is not taking it properly what that proper means that we'll try to understand next slide or art is not working due to the resistant or treatment failure and what we have done if you if you just re or try to uh, collect what has the algorithm what we have seen that art is not working and you are certain that after three months of uh, continuous uh, adherence more than that, then only you are going to say that resistance or treatment not working. Now we go. So whose role is there here? The role in these three months will be primarily for the counselors. And the counselor is not only the by job who is a counselor for all of us who are the stakeholders for this program. Let us go what and where the gaps can come. A minimum of three sessions are recommended to step up adherence counseling, where additional session you needed to ensure that the treatment has been more than 95 for three consecutive months. Now the, all the questions are, how long we can take it? That if it has not achieved in three months, can we go for the six months? Can we go for nine months? Can we go for a year? This can be questions in our mind. So let us try to answer with some practicality at the end of these slides. All counselor sessions are to be taken by the same counselor because the way I counsel, the way B counsels and way C counsels are slightly different. The same counselor, preferably the case manager, what we call it. What is ensure? We have to ensure that there is a consistency, there is a continuity and proper documentation of issue resolution. Third, the session to be conducted during the patient visit for pick pick, that is the best time to do it because he is definitely going to come in touch with the system or medical system or ART where you can do that thing. And the council needed to review the factors. Now, most important is you have to the review the factor that lead to the non-adherence and provide the customized counseling with all individual adherence plan. That means if you are doing a corrective steps and if you identify the gaps where the poor adherence is going to happen, so gives us a chance repeatedly to prevail upon that and see that the adherence becomes more than 95%. So if you look at this, how we can achieve it. So guidelines gives, there are three slides which we shall discuss where the step up adherence counseling, how we should do. In the session one, just after the so test results are given to us, we should start as early as possible. What are we going to do it? So we are going to understand the viral load and discuss the possible reasons of high viral load. Then the knowledge of the medication, to the uh, there are the possible barriers. One, I do not know about the medication. Second, there is a lack of motivation and a fear which may be real or which may not be, uh, which may be unrealistic of the side effects of any particular drug. Sometimes there is a hearsay that you go for the second line, you go for this drug, possibly there is a side effect. Sometimes the mentally patient may be unwell and discuss support system becomes very important for us. You need to identify a caretaker is close to the patient, is, is somebody who is close to him, he is willing to take the support, then probably the adherence counseling is going to be successful. Second, the check the patient history for the referral services, support groups, medical clinics, evaluate the response to such services. Support patient in developing an adherence plan which addresses and identifies the issues if at all you identified any and check the patient treatment adherence every time, both by the pill count and second at the, at the appointment adherence whenever you are giving him the appointment on the IMS to create a baseline. And that becomes a documentation where we really identify the patient early during the uh, enhanced or step of adherence. And we can do the corrective step at the earliest so that the question of whether to continue for the uh, step of adherence for next three months or next nine months or next one year will not come to our mind. The session two will be after 15 days and one month as deemed fit. 
as early as better, but at least once in a month, the second. So here we are going to review. So we got the opportunity, a council grade opportunity, medical officer get the opportunity. What is going wrong in the first month when the adherence was less than 95%? And are there any emerging issues or the gaps which can be discussed, which can be rectified and corrected? Follow up any referral services which are required. Do give the support and modify the adherence plans. If the first plan, what you are given, it seems to be not very much successful. And the patient treatment again and again has to be checked, recording the white card and on the regular basis. These become the second. Now, we have started with the step of adherence. We have initiated it. Now we got a correction, we need to identify the gaps and to see that the um, adherence of more than 95% can still be achieved after the second month when he comes to in your uh, contact. Now we have got one more chance of session three, 15 days or more. There also everything what we did earlier can be done. You can plug the gaps. So now the question is, after the sessions, after, now what we do is after three successful sessions, so I feel there are only two possible scenarios should come. One, the adherence was more than 95%. More than 95%, you have done the viral load. It should give only two reports. That viral load count is below 1,000. That means the counseling was successful and you can continue and do the monitoring as we sit with the algorithm. And second, you should get only another scenario where the Present regimen is not working because the viral load is more than, in spite of you giving a 95% adherence, uh, the patient has been taking. So in that, what the next step? Next step shall be to refer the case to SASE because it's been a failed, it's been a treatment failure. Now, if you go back to this, so there are so many ways by which we have seen that there are tools being so, uh, developed and there are tool bits in place. So these are the following tools that are where we can identify during the step of adherence or enhanced adherence. So what are the gaps and all that to identify that you have got self-explanatory and certain uh, tools has been there. So if you want, we had to fill it by the counselor. And what I find during a routine, uh, those who are following in the peripheries and the ERTs and the counselor are a little hesitant and probably they find it too burdened to fill it. But however, those suspected failures, unless we do this and find the gap and plug it. So we are going to get the third scenario, which absolutely neither you will have an answer or I will have an answer. So that situation should not come. We should have only two scenarios, treatment failed or counseling successful. Third thing, it should not come if you are following this tools. So this, this has to be filled by the counselors. And I, uh, I come across that this has not been done with that much of dedication. So henceforth, we shall do that and see to it that only two scenarios come to us. Okay, these are all the things. Now, if we look at it again, the same thing, conduct the wire load, which we have done. After three months, we'll do it. Two scenarios, the counseling was successful, adherence was successful, the count which was more than 1,000 has come down below 1,000 and we'll go continue monitoring. Now we have successfully done the adherence uh, is more than, after three months is more than 95%. So we are repeated the viral load and I expect most of them to come down to these two scenarios where viral load less than 1,000 copies and viral load more than 1,000 copies. But I don't want to see a patient where all past three months, the patient was having 75 for the undetermined causes. That should not happen. So role of a counselor and lower of the medical officers becomes a paramount. So we'll go for the next two questions. Where should a client be tested viral load after switching to second line uh, regimen? So it is very simple. So do we have got any guideline? Well, let us see. And suppose if there is an unseparate LFT client, viral load test to be done after six months or these are the questions which we in. So do we have got any answers for that? So let us see what are the answers for that. So you look at that, this is a uh, OM, what we got from the project director. If you go for the second point, for all those patients on the second or the third line, 
plasma viral load testing should be done every six months after initiation, after the initiation of second or the third line. That is the routine viral load testing. Now, there can be questions. Can we do a in between a viral load? Yes, if there are issues after you put it, the patient is not clinically improving or the clinical status is falling very rapidly and you have got a doubt that something is going wrong. So then you can still do a viral load, but those viral load is always better to uh, refer that case and win consultation with the SASE. You can take up the case for the mid time or after two months or three months again viral load. But as for the guidelines, second or third clinically doing right, and no symptoms should be done after six months, every six months. Now, this is a, a prioritized group at time. You go for the point four where PLA and HIV on the second and third line, frequency of testing will be every six months. This is, this is what you should be looking at. Now, there is one more question which has come. A client of the TLD. With a load of 20,000 after three months of repeat viral load. I would definitely want to know whether this was a TLD was initiated uh, before three months or this is a case of a suspected failure and you have put the patient on step up adherence because that becomes an important question here. Because, say, for example, if it is an ART name and you are initiated on TLD, so why would you do the viral load after three months? you would do viral load only after six months. So on that presumption, I will think that this case is already on TLD. And after six months or say maybe after one year or thereafter, a viral load was performed. And this case is saying that at that particular time, 20,000 is a viral load on routine this thing. So now at that particular time, so they have done the adherence was poor, the step up adherence was done in this case and the viral load after three months comes to 2,000. It's a very, very tricky question. Now, at one, this thing, you're saying um, that it seems to be a suspected failure. If, and when there is a suspected failure, after doing the, what you call is a step of adherence also, the viral load should go up. That should be the one expected. Or second, we should have an explanation that during dependency uh, during the treatment why the 20,000 has figure come to it that during this thing I, are there any clinical uh, sort of a episodes happen that time OIs which has temporarily raised the uh, viral load to 20,000 that has to be ascertained did I miss did we miss the OIs opportunity infection at that particular moment time that answer we do not have but however in this scenario if you have said that from 20,000 after the step up adherence, it has come to 2000. It's a positive trend. So now what should we do? If the patient has got no urgency in the sense, if the patient clinical scenario or is clinically not deteriorating, say so for example, he continues to be symptom free. And suppose if he's in clinical stage one, so I would as a SASA member, but after the consultation with the SASEC where the expert uh, team will decide whether we can continue him for one month of further uh, adherence counseling and continue on that regime or not. But at your end, you cannot take a decision to continue for one month. That would be my suggestion to you. And if you said we'll do that uh, at the SASEC after taking all the consideration, including what was that particular time when 20,000 was a uh, viral load was detected. Now, for these things to that, that we have got one important thing what we can discuss. So now you said that the patient was on TLD regimen. So what should we expect when the person is on TLD regimen? So if you look at it, so what we expected, if in an ART name, if you're going to put a TLD, we expect, uh, achieves a viral cell suppression within four weeks. When compared to if only first point, only this is slide been taken from some other uh, PowerPoint, but to emphasize that how Dr. Gavir's base regimen is so effective that it causes a viral suppression within four weeks compared to which is taken three months. 
In this particular case, you have already done whether it is a ART name or whether it is a uh, what you call is a on step up adherence. You have already given three months. What can we expect? The daltrekdivir should have been so effective that you would have been suppressed that uh, even not two thousand. But in this particular case. Let us give a benefit for doubt, especially when the patient is on second and third line. If we want to preserve the future options, one month delay is fair and a practical purposes, but the guidelines are silent on this. So what we can do is continue on the same thing, but, but you have to see that during this pendency of a next wire load, which can be intermediate after the sub consultation, and during this time, you have to monitor whether it's clinically not deteriorated. Next. Now, there is one question that viral load test done in private labs is suppressed. The question comes is, in our programmatic, there is no scope for us to send a viral load for the private lab. That should be very, very clear to the people, those who are in the program. But however, we can get a patient very enthusiastic, and sometimes there will be two inputs from them, from private practitioner on their own, or whatever their experience here say, they may go with the viral load done outside. And they come with a report. This is fairly common. And which shows, uh, according to this particular query, they said, it shows the suppression. But when we are doing in the program, it is not showing suppression, what to do, whether to think that it is a suppress or not to suppress. The most important aspect here is there are two more criteria for us to know the patient well-being. One is a clinically. So you have to see whether the clinically the patient is doing well or not. Number two, we have got one more if you are doing the serial CD4 counts. And if serial CD4 counts are persistently rising, so perhaps we have to take this report which has come from the uh, lab showing and suppress with a pinch of uh, salt. So what shall we do next? So, and what are the gaps? Why in our program, sometimes we get unsuppressed when outside. So outside report may be false or inside report or our own report can be false. So first, whenever you are sending the samples, you should ascertain the sample, whatever you are saying, we should never send an inappropriate. Even inappropriate sample, inaccurate authorities. Inappropriate sample, if you are sending in emulized samples, grossly lipemic, sample subject to repeated freezing and thawing for whatever reasons, visibly contaminated, inadequate volume, leaking tubes, improper label, label not matching with the request form, plasma sample stored or transported at temperature more than eight, samples from HIV to infected individual, all this will lead to, we call it an inappropriate sample and hence uncorrect uh, reports. So this we have to ascertain. And when these are seen to be perfectly fine, and still that query remains, that outside I have got a lag, and inside mine is unsuppressed. So what I will do is, so we can go for one more viral load, be taking all these things into due consideration, send it. And second time, if we get still it is unsuppressed, we shall only depend upon our own reports, rather than the reports what we receive from the outside. Now, there are a few more questions. One question has come, a client on the second line for the two months was accidentally put on old regimen. How to monitor the client there after in such a mishap? Most important, a mishap shouldn't happen because the patient is on second line. This mishap can prove very uh, fatal, at times can be fatal to the patient, but however, we have to be always in a positive frame of mind even if the mishap happens, there has to be correction. So we can err in the program, in a such huge program, at times we err. And whenever we are we have to do the corrective steps. And the first corrective steps shall be, now the questions what they ask is, shall we continue with the same regimen, which the old regimen you have put, how can you do that? You cannot do a patient, if he has failed on the first line, and which has been proven by the SASEP and SASEP take a decision that the first regime is no more working. Then only you'll put on the second line. So when on second line, there is no way by which you can come to the first line because it's a proven failure. 
Now the question is, is continuing on the failed regime? Failed regime because of the mishap. So what do you do? So we have to put the patient on the second line regime again. This becomes a more practical situation. You have to put it again and just monitor that person for the next period and wire load and monitoring shall be as if the decision of putting on that second line has taken on that particular day when you have already started the treatment or on the second line. So that means, suppose if it is today, you have started the second line after correcting that mishap, coming to giving him the second line after six months from today, you're going to do the viral load. Now the question comes is, sir, in between the patient deteriorates. Because I really, I will not say that during the that mishap period may be six months, mishap period can be seven months, it can be one year, the mishap has happened. So what practically we have continued on a failed regimen for so long, and we know that a failed region continues for longer time, even the second life what we are going to give may not be as successful. Am I dealing with that scenario in this particular case? Yes, I've got a chance to interpret this thing if the patient is clinically deteriorating, pending or on a scheduled viral load will be after six months, but clinically deteriorating is going in further or he becomes advanced PLHIV, then perhaps that case need to be referred to the SASEP where a clinical expert panel will take a decision to go for the uh, inter uh, the, uh, the uh, additional wire load at that particular moment of time and take a necessary step to put him on a working regimen, uh, thinking whether this is a uh, even second line has failed because of the mishap. So, and monitoring after the second line will be the same. There is no special monitoring except for clinical monitoring and a close monitoring because here. We are uh, aware that a mishap has happened and we are expecting a, a cross resistance to the second line also. The close monitoring is necessary for this particular case. And one more question has come thereafter. Uh, what is the guideline to monitor patient when the second line, if there is a short supply of regime and viral load testing guidelines in this scenario and how many months? Yeah, so we'll go. The answer for the second shall be, there cannot be a guideline when there is a short supply. Because this is a sort of a, what is the best possible scenario and best possible care we can give in the program where there is a short supply. The short supply can happen under various this thing. It can be a, a logistic, it can be financial, it can be administrative. So at various times, we have seen in the program for the past 13, 14 years, which I am associated, at times there will be short supply, but most of the time short supply will get corrected over time. And during short supply, we receive a uh, office memorandum, what to do it in this chart. So if you look for the recent short uh, OM, where the Tazanavir based regimen, we got this thing that you change it to the Delta Grivir regimen. But the question is, whenever that happens, if it is a OM, whether to do a viral load or not to do it and directly put it, is also been given in the OM. So whenever such situation is coming of the short supply, there cannot be a guideline, but only one guideline, what we need to know is, they will only cover with the general guidelines what has been given till the short supply has been corrected. And in my experience, that sh this uh, uh, short supplies are very temporary. They may not go beyond one or two months and not much of the damage will be done to the patient. Now the viral aid testing guideline in this scenario, there cannot be viral aid guidelines shall remain as in the general uh, guidelines, what we do for the viral load. Say for example, a second line is there. Viral load has to be done after six months only. But in between, if you find there are clinical events and there is a fast deterioration, always SASs have got a mandate and they got a power to ask for the viral load in between also and take a remedial step in between. And it's not a hard and fast tool, but who will go into there? But it cannot be discriminate. And wherever you have got a doubt, go for the viral load. That creates a more logistic and a treatment uh, dilemmas rather than helping the patient. Now, how many months a viral load test will be accepted for some? If you look for uh, into your referral forms, so for CD4 count, they have given it very, very clearly. 
that CD4 count should be as recent as possible. That means within one month. Suppose if you are giving me sending a referral after the CD4 count after six months, that doesn't stand valid for me to take a decision as an expert member in this asset. Same with this. Now we have gone for the much better monitoring system in the form of a viral monitoring. So it should be as fresh as possible, as fresh as possible, because we know the viral load, if it is outside the, say more than thousand, it will take very less time for it to become exponential and go into the lakhs and million. So it should be as early as possible and definitely not beyond one month. It should be as recent as possible. I think this query uh, has been answered. Okay. Yeah, and one more question uh, was asked. Can third line be given at the ART center? As of present, the third line mandate is not been given to the ART center. It should be done only in the center of excellence only because there the third line drugs will be available that there are so many issues, logistic and monitoring issues also, which will be done in the center of excellence. I do not know in future whether that can be put in the ART center or not as the process of data centralization may take place. But as of now, no, it will be done only in the SAS side. So, and uh, I request now Dr. Manish is also, I think, uh, as logged in. If I have missed anything, if I need any correction, so is free to correct me. Dr. Manish. And any questions? So I'm still there. Uh, Praveen, sir, can you please make Manish, sir, co host? Manish, sir, please give us two minutes. Yes, sir, you can unmute them. Meantime, if any ART medical officers have any questions. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sir, no additional comments. You are uh, like uh, covered most of the things. So your voice is not audible. Please go. So, sir, I, I will have queries around whether a viral load to be. So I think uh, you can. So if, if there are any network issues, uh, other medical officers also, we just request you to post any other queries you have on the chat box. Was Mine was or any other questions from any medical officers also, we are ready to take the questions. See, I request all the medical officers to open up because we rarely get chance like this to talk to Dr. Deepak, you know, to clarify all the doubts, what all you have on EAC and SASA referrals. Please put your questions out so that we will clarify most of it right now. We have time. I think we have 10 minutes more. Uh, there's one uh, question that has been put up by uh, Manisha. Uh, queries if patient has TB, should we do viral loop? If the patient has TB, should we do a viral loop? Yes, definitely. Even if the patient has got TB, yeah, you have to do the viral loop. But mind you, that whenever the patient having a uh, TB, so we have to expect that the viral load may come up and in the, uh, can go up also as well. So if you look at the HIV TB protocols and there everything will be go as routine. Uh, participants can now unmute uh, their mic and ask questions.
There's one question in the chat box. Regular shortage of ATVR and AL, how to maintain adherence? No, uh, regular shortage of it. ATV by R and AL. I know we have shortage of this drug also. So they're yeah. asking how to maintain adherence in this scenario. Well, no, what is the, what, what is the problem in that? Suppose uh, there is a shortage of ATV R already. If you look at it, the recently, if, if it is a if it is a ATV R, you are asked to put the patient on Dr. Gavid. That OM has already come, so we can go in for AL DTG by R. Uh, sorry, OL and DTG, uh, Dr. Gavid, and you can continue the adherence till the time the ATV R is made available to you. And that is what I said, whenever there is a regular shortage, the shortage will be of short time. Here, you cannot have a foolproof mechanism to give the best possible, but the second best possible has to be looked for that. Second question is, isolated bilirubin is elevated enzymes are normal. Do we need to change or stop TLD? Now, what I see is, with TLD, we do not see uh, uh, none of the uh, drugs in the TLD will normally raise the uh, bilirubin. So bilirubin raise is we see with the ATV by R, atazanivir based regimen. In such cases, it is guided with, you have to go with the child book scoring system and where you uh, categorize them into mild, moderate and severe. So usually moderate and severe or what you call is a uh, stage one, stage two, or three, whatever, you do not change it. And that this issue of isolated bilirubin elevation will come with the ATV bar regimen, not with this regimen. So, other one, ATV by R drug are recommended by Sansa. Can we change short course of ALD? So, there is one more query uh, regarding ATV or drug are referred by Sansa. Is a, uh, can we change the short course of ALD? Now, important is here, what was it was a first line or it was the ATV bar in the second line? So, what was the first line in this? ART, sorry, a bit, please respond. Second line. Yeah. In the second, second line. So, in the second line, it becomes very difficult. If the first line doctor delivery is being failed, so if it is a integrase based uh, regimen, integrase based regimen was there in the first and that failed now, and the patient now is on uh, ATVR based regimen. So here you are bringing a drug again which has documented failure. I don't think you can do that. You cannot do that. Now the question is. Can you go for the LPVR? Can be one of the things what you need to be discussed. And suppose if the patient is very well suppressed with this, then you can go for the alternate second line where a protease inhibitor should be replaced or substituted with pro protease inhibitor. And what we have is LPVR if there are no contraindications for that. And this decision is better to take it at the SASEC rather than at the ART center. And I presume this, uh, the patient has already failed on the first line where he failed on the integrase bit 
category based regimen. If there are any more query, participants are requested to unmute their microphone to see everybody's time. And also unmute your microphone. Any other queries? Yeah, any any other any other there is one query that the EAC form is for three months, but in SCLAT is not adhered for one month. So giving EAC for more three months for how long a client can be kept on EAC not doing it? I think. Uh, this answer I have already given. So where, when we are seeing EAC should be given only for three months, and there is a possibility we should have only two scenarios where it has been successful and the patient should be continuing the same regimen or it is failed. Because rest all the sinners, if you are plugging the gap, this should not happen. And let us see that the third scenario comes where certain gaps were found and the patient uh, we need to extend it for maybe one more month. So you, you have got a specially made ESE, what you call, uh, we have got that, uh, which is to be filled by the counselor. And then that's counseling form. Yeah. So we have got a format that has been shared. If you are putting that, so you can go for one month further, uh, sort of a step of adherence and continue on that. But beyond that, it makes no sense. If you all the time say that three months, 75%, six months, 60%, that doesn't make any uh, benefit to the stakeholder. Any more questions from the participants? Please feel free to unmute your mic. Yeah, ma'am, one small submission. Uh, right now, if there are uh, no questions also, hmm. in future, if they have any questions, they can just post it to me. I'm Dr. Shanti from Accelerate. Or to Dr. Radhika. Uh, she's from uh, ART Center Gandhi. Then we will have a chance to, you know, directly answer the questions, whoever is putting it. We have a separate group also for all the medical officers. So what Dr. Deepak is suggesting is whenever you have a doubt, clarify it immediately then and there. So whenever a doctor is free, he will be ready to answer all the queries whenever we are receiving it. So I think this is a good opportunity for all the medical officers to clarify their doubts. Whenever you have a doubt, please post it to us. We will clarify it as early as possible to you. Thank you, ma'am. So can we conclude this session now? Mm -hmm. oh, can we end this session now? Yeah, yes, ma'am. If there are no further questions, I think we can end this. Uh, all the questions from the chat box have been covered, right? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Right, right. There are no more questions. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for taking up this important topic. Thank you to all the participants for patient listening. We'll continue the session. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.